Welcome to the Religiously Offensive Podcast. Luke, I won't use any of this. Don't worry. I'm looking up golf clubs. You don't have to. I've kept stuff in that you probably thought I wasn't going to keep in. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, (laughs) yeah, on the go. Big F yesterday. We did have our first hard F. That wasn't the first. To be fair. (laughs) Really? She did it before. (laughs) Did I know know we were recording that time, too? We were in the middle of it. Oh. (laughs) I'm so sorry. That's fine. Mm. A hard slurp in the mic. Just, that was great. It's a podcast I listen to. Every every episode he starts with a sip. Uh, That's how he starts fantastic. off every episode. We start. We also start out. This is the welcome back to the number one Christian podcast all yeah. time in the world, undisputed. <laughs> the numbers number don't one, lie. Number one trending. <laughs> We're going to the moon in the city of with Oviedo. Dogecoin. <laughs> yeah. Disc golf. Um, yeah, well, disc golf can be more expensive because it's like Whoa. It, discs are twenty bucks. So if you lose it's five tough. twenty dollar discs, that's a what, well, bro? A fifth of a golf cl- Yeah, golf's pretty expensive. That's a challenge. It? Like that UCF course, especially now that they've changed it. I mean, certain courses are just built to lose discs. These- I mean, you got water and places. You got just like absurdly thick brush. You think these are just crappy? I mean, look, this is $34. You get seven discs. Probably, A bag yes. and a water bottle pocket with the bag. Uh, I mean, try. Quality. Try. I mean, <laughs> yeah. either way. I mean, I mean it looks it If, looks if you're like, a beginner, I mean, it's going to it's gonna be, yeah, it's going to be fine. I'll get the job discs done. Discs are yeah, like paper plates. trashy disc, I'm always going to be a beginner. You're not wrong. Wow. Trashy discs. I still have to Venmo you for the disc I lost. No worries. Tragic. It's in the bush. I left one out there somewhere randomly, and then I lost another putter at the beach last weekend. Some dude took mine. Christian just launched it into the ocean, and they don't float. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They're probably, they they gotta have floating ones, right, by this point. Well, not like a a disc golf putter. They're not designed, I mean, they have floating frisbees that they make for the beach. Can't they just, like, throw a couple air bubbles in there? I mean, it probably just affect the the flight. You need that heavy, dense. You need it to cut through the air, you know? Dang. Technology where it is. I feel like that's an oversight. Yeah. Hey, I did want to mention something. Um, I didn't have no context for this um, yet. Lovely. But I'm sure she will provide. (laughs) I, uh... You know how you get random texts from people that, like, meant to go to someone else? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, not on the recording. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Gabby texted me yesterday. Yes. She says, out of nowhere, super whack. I should probably just bomb the plane. <laughs> <laughs> of all the random texts oh I've gotten. Gosh. Wait, wait. Normally, bomb, I need the context. B-O-M-B, bomb. bomb the plane. Bomb the plane. Yeah, in case the CIA is listening. <laughs> It, I can guarantee that's not what. Moral of the story is context. Make sure you're typing to the correct person. <laughs> well, I've, can you read that one more time? <clears throat> Super whack. I should probably just bomb the plane. I'm trying to think of what, what I was could possibly response? be talking about. What was your response? It's a laughing uh, emoji. He said, she said, wrong person, LMAO. <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> I can explain. <laughs> Sounds like something a terrorist would say. <laughs> Guilty. Oh, wrong yeah. person. <laughs> She's in Guantanamo. We're going to have to FaceTime her from Guantanamo next week. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And the reasoning behind that is for my flight for Pittsburgh tomorrow, I originally booked it for today at like 6 p.m. And Spirit just changed it to tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Yeah. So now I'm getting up at like 3.45 a.m. Oh, tomorrow. that is trash. <clears throat> what a joy. And, oh, and my cousin, she was like, yeah, and they basically stole a night from us. Are you uh, uh And I was like, yeah, I should probably just bomb the plane. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, I love Which, how absurd so it is. It's great. Are you, are you getting dropped off or are you parking? 
I'm parking it. Oh, God. I know. Dang. So that's the, an extra half an hour. Yeah. That's brutal. Because well, you can't brutal. get anyone to drop you off at the, yeah. at the airport that early. Yeah, Unless. That's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> we all run. Corey? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, no, you got to text them 30 minutes before you got to be there. Yeah. <laughs> be like, hey. It's like 2.45 anyone, a.m. <laughs> anyone take me to the airport? What's up, fam? What's yeah. up? Fam? Oh. <laughs> anyone want to drop me off? That's great. Uh, but anyway, Artemis, we were talking about Artemis. Artemis is um, basically a you know a program. Um, I just not get too deep into it. A NASA program to bring people back to the moon. So oh. finally, you know the sister thing, Apollo. You know because mm. Paul, it's been like fifty years since we've been in the moon, which is depressing in mm. itself. But it's really just to you know. We're going back, right? So um, the SLS is part of that, kind of loosely part of that is whole Elon's thing with Super Heavy and Starship and all that stuff, which is exciting, which I'm into. And she's named after a woman, so very, you know, progressive. Progressive, for sure. Hell yeah. Women. Yeah. And the Artemis. goddess of wild animals, the hunt, vegetation, and chastity, and childbirth. So many things. Like, a lot of hats. Just, yeah. She's busy. Bringing all of it to the moon. How is she? How is how how does she do chastity and childbirth? Mm. That feels conflicting. Is it though? Ask the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. Gotcha. Damn. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Fair no, enough. I mean, <clears throat> Artemis is just kind of a dope name too. It is. It is a cool name. Have and you seen that movie, Gladiator? Please, please tell me. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. Is yeah. Artemis not a transformer? Well, yeah. Uh, Optimus. Okay. Optimus. Ma oh my gosh, Maximus is from Gladiator. Yeah, have Max you seen it? Yeah, I was about to say I was like, uh, I'm like Artemis. Uh, it's Artemis I have seen the movie really though. Maximus. Maximus Aurelius is his name. So what you're just saying is this: anything Greek is like pretty <laughs> badass, like <laughs> yeah. Or, or yeah, Latin. Basically. You know, people use like Latin words to give things more, you know, gravitas. Oh, I see what you did. Yeah, you see what I did. I see what you did. Yeah, that was Russell Crowe's golden years. Oh, dude. Joaquin Phoenix movie. was the perfect bad guy. Yes. With that weird lip. Yep. <laughs> and then he disappears for a while and then slays it with the Joker. I thought that was a great movie. I it's mean, movie. it's, it's yeah. you know, different. I heard it was dark. I haven't seen it yet. Well, it's because it's dark doesn't mean it can't be great. So, okay, so where like the Heath Ledger Joker was just like demented, like psychotic. Yeah. Is it like a similar vibe or yes. is he more like, yes. Yes. but it shows like similar. his mental like transition closet, into like, that shows the, it's his but he's origin as story. gnarly as like the Heath Ledger Joker. <clears throat> uh, yeah, arguably, yeah, like Argu pencil, arguably even more crazy. Yeah, honestly, yeah. pencil through the hand, through the eye. Pff, well, worse. I would say worse, probably yeah. worse, but it's not, that's more like shock factor. Uh -huh. This one's more like. That dude crazy. That dude got something going on. Kind of lame though that they that he wasn't the the Joker at the end of the new Batman movie though. Haven't seen it. So no. There's a quick there's a quick scene at the very end where the Joker. Was the new Batman a DC the Riddler, thing? Well, I mean, obviously he's DC, but was it a DC thing? The DC movie. Did they, did I'm they not prepared it? for this conversation. I have no idea. No, nah, I mean, I'm just like, there's, I'm just, I'm just saying, there's a lot of things DC does wrong. Yeah, it's just like they can't stop doing things well, see, wrong. That, okay, so that's where Marvel just crushes it Marvel because like everything that. is like it's part of the MC, it's part of the thing. Yeah. And genius. then like DC, they're just throwing out these random things. You're just like, does any of this connect? Yeah. Every like six movies, they put no, multiple in one You've movie. You've got like three different Batman in the last six years. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we should probably get on top on topic or else people are going to stop listening. Give the people what they want. That's fair. Um, you could so, just cut all that out. I'm not going to cut all that out because it's golden. I love that stuff. People like listening to that, I think. Just not forever. We'll find we out. Gold, Unless man. I'm just being a narcissist again. <laughs> this is yeah. like, uh, people like hearing what we're it's not talking our fault. about. Like me. It's not our fault. Our parents made us like this. I know. It's, a, it's all our parents. <laughs> shout out mom and dad. Too many shout outs. I'm trying to shout out less. It's just so it's so fun. What's funny <laughs> is it's like you say things a lot louder than when you say shout out. It's like, oh, shout out. Shout you know, out. like then you like scream something, and it's just like, well, why didn't you just say like, <laughs> yeah. shout out, yo, what's up? <laughs> this is That's funny. True. It's an unassuming. Anyway, yeah. So the subject today is what is it? Can preachers have nice things? Mm. Preachers, pastors, whatever. Right? I don't mm. even know what the title this is going to be yet, but something along those lines, right? It's dicey. So I think overall, you know, we talk about. Uh, 
or when you think about it, you know, you, you typically tend to think of uh, pastors, especially if you grew up in a small town, small church, pastors don't really usually have a lot, right? Um, you know, they have what the people in the church are willing to give. And, you know, after all the bills are paid, it's like, all right, the pastor gets paid. Um, so, you know, traditionally it's, it's seen as like a position of sacrifice, right? A position of, um, you know, when um, it's kind of like, well, someone's got to do the dirty work and, you know, here I am making this sacrifice. And usually it's kind of obvious, right? Um, and there's different nuances, different here and there, depending on the church. But um, there's a whole thing with kind of our modern culture, probably again, spurred by materialism, like we've talked about, um, where you have uh, a lot of these people on Instagram or pastors, you know, whether whether it's like the recorded messages or, you know, you'll see excerpts on Instagram or something like just them wearing some dope clothes or like having some nice stuff. And you're just like, well, is that what this is about? Like, I mean, you know, um, and so, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, be interesting to get everyone's kind of just initial take on that. Uh, what your thoughts are. Yeah. So a lot of this is kind of out of sight, out of mind, probably for most people. And it's, uh, you know, most people probably imagine certain people, like naturally the bigger organization gets, you know, the more demand on them, you know, salaries increase. Um, they write books. Some of these guys get involved with uh, music that gets recorded and released through labels. Or and celebrities. Yeah. And you just kind of raise that status. You know, I come from... Um, pastor's family where my dad planted a church the like months after I was born. And I mean, most of my life we're raising, um, you know, a family of five on like 50, 60 grand. And I mean, my mom used to tell me the stories all the time. Like he would basically get to a point where, um, like he would turn down raises from the board because it's just like, he felt the, the money could be used better and he just trusted the Lord. And, and even on top of that, I mean, it's incredible that, uh, I mean, that's why this, my dad's my hero. I mean, it was just, he really lived it. And, and on top of that, they found a way to give away way more than they probably should have been able to. And then like, on top of that, like even the, the story of how we ended up, like by the time I was in high school, like we had a house that was worth like half a million, which was crazy. Cause we're making like, we're like, there's no way we should be able to do that. And the story basically goes, we, <laughs> we had a really like small house and one part of Columbus, real cheap little house. And then my dad would go to Bob Evans every morning at like 5 a.m. It was just his thing. And he, he just kept seeing this dude over and over. Turns out the guy's a realtor. And they just get to talking. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a house. We're moving to this part of the city. I want to start a church. And and they basically kept talking. And this realtor was comes to the point where he's just like, oh, man, I, I have the perfect seller. I think this could work for you. He's like... The guy has a house, it's a beautiful house, but it's on a main road. So it's not like in a nice neighborhood. So it's a little like undervalued because you don't have that cul-de-sac kind of vibe. Um, but also the owner really wants it to go to a good family, like a young family. Mm. And, you know, dad's like, I got three little kids, da, da, da. So dude gives him just like unbelievable, like markdown pricing on this house that like mm. really we shouldn't have been able to afford. So we get to move into this house, beautiful house. And then like 10 years later, the city comes to us and they're like, the road that you're living on needs to be expanded. Right. And like, it's imminent domain. Like they're taking it. You don't get a choice. And so when the city came in and bought our house, um, they usually they basically pretty fat. Well, no, they placed it in like the nearest like neighborhood, which was like a pretty nice neighborhood. Oh, nice. And so it like increased the property value, like crazy, like double what they paid for it. Wow. Uh, probably more. And then that was basically the re the only reason we were able to get like a beautiful house. So it's like, it's interesting. Cause it's like, if people would have saw that, it's like, dang, we had really, we had a really nice house, but it's like, can you go into the story of it? It's just like, yeah, it's not cause we were making money. That's, like, that's unreal. But cool stories. Yeah, right. And really so, cool. but I guess all that to say, like growing up, you know, as a pastor's kid and watching, you know, dad taking haircuts financially as much as possible because he believed in the church <laughs> and he believed in the organization, you know, I, I don't want to come to come from a place where it's like super judgmental. Cause it's like, man, the measure at which you judge is going to be brought back on you. You know, mm -hmm. that's something where, you know, it's, it's, it's good to shed light on things, but I, you know, that's a Bible verse, whatever. Yeah. But Justin but, didn't just make that up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But part of the challenge too is like, we'll, we'll get into this a little later in the pod, but like not only 
like there's a lot of, of um, help from the government for pastors, whether it's tax exemptions and even when it comes to buying homes and paying taxes on homes, the church is a nonprofit. So you get a lot of breaks on taxes and stuff like that. So part of the whole thing is like, okay, so these people are worth tens of millions of dollars and they're getting all these tax exemptions on these mansions and all this stuff. So it's like, that kind of moves into a different realm of like, okay, these, these government type of exemptions, you know, the 501c3 kind of world was built to help people who weren't making a lot of money, Mm -hmm. you know? And then now it's like, oh man, it's like a different beast because now we got people who are making tons of money and they don't have to pay taxes on a lot of it. Yeah. And it's just, so I guess that's in Best a nutshell. of both worlds, huh? But yeah, Gab. Well, I don't think it's about how much money they make necessarily, but what they're doing with it. Mm. That's good. You took so long, I forgot we were going around the yeah, table. Uh, I, gotta, I gotta get better at that. I suck. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, yeah. guys. I'm like, why are we going to Gap? Oh, hey, yeah. That's it for the pod today. <laughs> Come back next. Yeah. yeah, all right, go for yeah, it. Yeah, that was a bar. Um, that was a bar. Have you spitting, bro? Bars be um, spitting. <laughs> no, but I mean, all right. So, yeah, I mean, like if, if there's, say there's a pastor that makes a million dollars, but he donates 90% of it, would we care that he's making a million dollars? Right. But if, you know, but if he's. If, I think the I people we're talking about are not those people. They're like billionaires. <laughs> they're not billionaires. Not billionaire. I, I don't, if someone made that much on ministry, I mean, they'd probably go to jail. And um, it's also hard to know because I don't know how much they disclose, but I would imagine if you are making tens of millions and you are giving away most of it, I'd probably make that public knowledge. Yeah. Just because it's like, if, if people know I'm making this much, I'm like, I don't want, I'm not for my own like pride. Like there's so many I just lines. Want, yeah. I just want yeah. you to know it's like, Hey, I'm not keeping most of this. Like I would want well, to your people point, to trust with me. The, oh, no. With the like, um, like, okay. So if they're making, they're making a bunch of money, but, uh, like you said, like they're doing book sales, they're doing or whatever else they're making money from. It's not coming from the church, but I look, obviously the, I don't ugger, church, the other but, argument with that in, is that, and I, I like, I think it's great if like a pastor has a company where he makes like windows or something and he's like super wealthy because of that company Mm -hmm. has nothing to do with the church. I think that's fantastic. I think the pastor has, is able to do that. And I think that, you know, that, that kind of more mimics what we talk about in the new Testament church where pastors had other jobs or other things that provided them income and they didn't really make a lot of money from the church. But when you talk about a book deal, I mean, it's like, all right, are, are you leveraging the, the platform of the church? Are you leveraging your yeah. exposure because of what the church has done for you or you what God's done for you through the church to write a book? I mean, it, it, when you become so popular, I mean, you could pretty much do anything and it results in tons of money, right? Mm-hmm. Whether it's music licensing, I mean, Elevation Church does it, like Stephen Furtick, you know, just music licensing, the book deals and all this stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, and I think you looked up something, he's a, worth over $50 million, has a $1.7 million mansion, right? So, and, you know, there's all these arguments, like you can manipulate tax records and things where I think it said he only paid 350000 for that house or something like that. But it's just an example of like, all right, you are probably living in like a situation that is way beyond the average church member. Mm-hmm. I mean, at what point are, are we really talking about, are, what are we telling people here? Are we telling people that, are we, are we telling people that like, you know, same thing with the prosperity thing, right? It's just like you give money, you're faithful to God, you know, you do all this and you know, God will bless you with material resources. And, mm-hmm. and you know, is that what we're, because that's kind of like what we're saying, right? Without saying it. So they're preaching prosperity without preaching prosperity. And, you know, it also tells people like who want to get into ministry for good reasons or whatever, or want to like have good intentions or passions behind it. It also kind of gives them this false sense of like, well, I guess, you know, an off chance I'm real successful. I could have all this money. I can have all these things, you know? Um, I think it's, I think it's an issue, right? Um, yeah. You know, so it's, anyway, well, I think that was, I, I think that was my that. point was like, it doesn't matter. So I, I feel like I read, like just looking before this podcast, like I read, you know, some pastors that make a bunch of money have made excuses that those monies, like the, that money didn't come from the church. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I made it off of this other stuff, but that's like what here I wrote it down. Cause so like Jesus tells the, the parable of the rich fool. Right. Or so I read this. He's so he's a fool in the story, not because he's rich, but because he stored it up for himself. Hmm. And then also 
uh, Act 432, 34. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all that there were no needy persons among them. So Gabby preaching. Bro. Come on. So it's cool that there. you got all that money from this other, but the way you're living your life and the way that you're preaching to other people, yeah. it doesn't matter that the money came from somewhere else. You should still be putting it to good use. Sheesh. And this is real important because a lot of the so people good. that will come at these, these pastors and, and other people, right. That, that do this are people in the church. They grew up in the church. Some of it could stem from envy, but you know, Gabby, li- I mean, literally, I mean, you don't really read the Bible, right? And yeah. and you were just looking this stuff up. It's just like, what does the Bible say about this from an mm-hmm. outside perspective? And you nailed it. It's like, you know, this is really what the Bible says. And and you like being not having a any of this. And I think you know, we kind of probably have our biases and the things that we think the Bible says about this. But we, you know, it's 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 one thing to take an outside perspective. And I think that's real powerful. It's just like, and that that's convicting for me even. Right. It's just like, okay. Well, wow. and here's I mean, another you know, thing. Just, mm. Don't stop. That's yeah, something else. Going. Don't stop. Here's another going. thing. Because I, I, so I kept reading and I'm in, and, and so like in my mind, right. I'm not wealthy. I don't have a lot of money, but I, you know, just reading. So if you're thinking of the richest billionaires who lead fortune 500 companies, you may need to reset your idea of wealth. Worldwide statistics show that, in fact, you are probably one of the world's wealthiest people. According to a paper from the World Bank in 2012, if you make more than $50,000 annually, you are in the global 1%. Mm. Mm. So right. That perspective is huge. Yeah. That's, yeah. You lose sight of that, yeah. That's so it's good. like if the fact that you have a house, you have electricity, like, like if we're even able to read the articles that we're reading yeah, right, about this. Right. Like yeah. on screens, not on like right. newspa- out of on newspapers. On like a computer that we own, right? Jeez. Yeah, Luke, what? Did, you, did you, do we get your perspective yet? Not yet. No, we're no. Still, you, I yeah. mean, this is, we're, <laughs> bars, bars have been <laughs> Like, spent. before we get too deep, we got, where are you at? No. All right, Luke, bring us home. Bring I, it all together. I don't know. I mean, I, I think Our your story <laughs> was, was spot on. Like, if someone drove by that house, how much would they just assume? We did have people in our church that were, that were just like, like my mom still tells me the story to this day. It's like, if my pastor's gonna live like this, I'm doing something wrong. Right. Yeah. And like, so <laughs> I, I think that's it. But if but if you dove into it, you'd see this the heart behind it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so my stance is uh like I, I don't do I think that it's the right thing to do? Do I think it's ethical for like to buy I saw a story that someone bought like a two hundred thousand dollar Lamborghini for their wife. John Gray. I saw that, right. yeah. <laughs> Like he, do he's I, he's a he's a regular on the preachers and sneakers Instagram. <laughs> like do do I do I think that that's a good move? Pretty. Probably not. But I, I'm not gonna drive by the house and assume right. Like I don't know mm-hmm. what he's doing. So I could have been gifted. Yeah, whatever by Lamborghini of America. You know, so I, I think Italy. Um, yeah. There's right. a line. I think yeah. I, Question is, what I think there's a line, gift? and I think people obsess over what is the line, and a lot of the stuff that we talk about with money is like. You heard it. You're so worried about the speck in their eye. What about the log in your own? Yeah. And so it's like mo- the Bible talks about money all over the place. I think there was over was 2,000 times. Gabby's, Gabby's research. Holy up. shit. But Jesus I'm sorry. specifically. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so surprised. Just no, it's a bunch. At the mouth. It's crazy. No, not vomited. I'm just. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> yeah, that one. There. There. <laughs> Like there's obvious JMJ. obvious power behind money and 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 so it the Bible teaches that like let me read the right verse so I don't botch it but there's there's it's a verse important. that says here it is it's it is. Matthew six twenty one wherever your treasure is there the desires of your heart will also be right we've all mm-hmm. heard that I'm sure and yeah that's just one of the bunch where it's just important. If money, if, if Jesus talked about, think about this. Jesus lived in a time where like money was like material things weren't as big as they are They're now. Just becoming a thing. But for some reason, he talked about it the most. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, so I, well, there, I think power he still had because I think he talks about Pharisees and stuff. Like they had all the like really nice like robes and all the like nice accommodation and all these. I mean, th- I think they were th- it, they it were did things. exist. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it, when you talk about and that's, I mean, and it's it's hard to not relate 
the people that we're talking about to those Pharisees and those things, like, because when you look at Jesus life, not at all like that. I mean, right. he didn't know anything. Neither did Paul. And right. It's just, if that's the example we're going off of, if, if really we're saying Jesus is our example and how we live our life, how is that not in direct conflict? I mean, you know, I mean, and granted, like I said, I am not, you know, I'm not, I'm not living the perfect life. Right. Um, but when, when you become like a teacher of the word and you're going to claim that you are following Jesus life as close as you can, and mm -hmm. you are claiming like I'm sacrificing and it's just like, and then all of a sudden, like you leverage your following to, to either get like gifts of these nice things, which is fine. But like, you have to understand what the optics are, right? Mm -hmm. You have to understand how people will view it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important. I think because a lot of people just say, live an unapologetic life, like just live away, you know, but uh, that's, that's, that's a bunch of crap. Like I, I, you know, my opinion, again, this is my opinion. Um, I, I don't, it, what people perceive is extremely important, especially in the outside world, because it's like, you're not trying to reach people that are already in the church, mm -hmm. like people that love you and like, don't care. They're willing to like, look past some of that stuff. You're looking at the people from the outside. Right. And so, you know, I mean, it, I mean, I, I told I told you guys we were going to talk about this like a couple hours ago, right? Gabby literally just did a little bit of research and, you know, just blew our minds, right? It just like how much does it take someone who's really curious about the Christian faith to go into this? 15 do, minutes. Do their own, <laughs> 15 minutes. That's exactly. Do their own research, right? right. And understand what the Bible says. Look right. at these people as like, you know, seemingly like they're hypocrites and mm -hmm. just be like, well, I don't want any part of that. Sure. Well, the yeah. challenge too is like, you know, so much of scripture that we've even do like dove into over these last, you know, number of episodes, so much of it is kind of ambiguous where it's just like, there's a little gray area and it's like, eh, it's not super clear. Could be this, could be that. Like when we did the creation and like evolution thing, it's just like, there's some to be left. Maybe, I don't know, a little gray area. This one feels pretty black and white. Yeah. And it's like, now it feels like we're looking at it and like, we're trying to create a, like gray areas where it's like, well, if it's book sales and if it like comes from like, you know, like it's just challenging. Cause for me, it's like, if the money is coming from the ministry or it's any element of its likeness, you know, it's like, it's hard. And you hear stories about like some like, um, uh, purpose driven life. What was that dude? Um, we were just talking about him. We won't be able to remember his name though. It. I'll get it real quick. But basically the dude reverse tithed, um, he gave away 90% of his income mm -hmm. and he lives on 10%. Mm -hmm. Rick Warren. Yeah. My goodness. But <laughs> yeah, like the, the challenge is you hear stories like that and you're like, dude, that's sick. And it's like, no wonder that book just blew up and it was one of the most bought downloaded books in the history of the world. But it's challenging because then you have verses, you know, you just read and it's like, it's, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And if that rich man is your pastor, it's just weird. It is weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's if, like, if, if, if the camel, like, bro, I, if it's hard, camels to, are large. If it's hard to fit the camel through, how do you fit your private jet through there? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> something, <laughs> something to be said. <laughs> <laughs> just funny, like yeah. So uh, this is a good exercise, Justin. Bring up that list. So this is, I think, this is specifically like televangelists, um, or maybe mm -hmm. not. Maybe pa like you know, just pastors. For the most part. What was the uh, what was the title of it? What did? Uh, let's see. Uh, Ten American pastors with private jets. Dash, it's what Jesus would do. And <laughs> the, the title of it? Yeah. Oh, boy. And then, well, no, it's it's pure sarcasm. And uh, then okay. it uses <laughs> it uses that verse about the camel going through the eye of a needle. You know, it's easier for a camel to pass through eye of a needle than a rich man in the kingdom of God. And then, but they never said anything a, about private jets, right? If it's a jet, you just fly over the gate and you're good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just hit the landing strip. Um, but yeah, do you want the list or is it not necessary? Yes, I do. <laughs> I think our viewers right. want the list. <laughs> All right. So with no judgment, this is, and just, this is just reality. No judgment. He's just reading it's a just list. The, so anyone who's going to say we're coming down on any of these people, they could have their own reasons. Which Do you we'll, also we'll want the type of aircraft or just? Yes. I love aircraft. <laughs> okay. This it. is great. Uh, <laughs> Kenneth Copeland has a Gulfstream 5. Mm. Uh, Jesse Duplantis has a Dassault Falcon 7X. Uh, Jerry Savelle has a Cessna 500. Joyce Meyer has a Gulfstream 4. Cessna, Cessna is reasonable. Joyce, I think you Cessna, get these, are all, okay. these are all private jets they own themselves. Okay. Uh, Cessna is not a jet, though, right? I don't a know. Prop plane? I have no idea. 
Okay. Joyce Meyer's got a Gulfstream four. Come on, Joyce. You got I mean, you got to get yeah, crank that up to a five. That's why cool. do they need these? Weeks off. G four. Uh, Creflo Dollar's G-Bus. got a Gulfstream three. Joel Osteen has an Airbus A three nineteen. Mm. Um, the Crouches, who I believe they own TBN Trinity Broadcasting. Network. Are they the preaching big... around the country? Like we'll get into that. I'm sure they are. <laughs> <laughs> Their phone's broken, so Doing they the need to go work. fly private to see people. Um, Pat Robertson has a Learjet 35, like and then an Mark America Barkley problem. has a Cessna Citation 3. So that is true. That's Look up how many pastors. Because in other, uh, I read somewhere before this that in other countries, um, like they're paid just based off of their experience. So someone that's been doing it for three years doesn't oh, kind matter of like a how master old you trainer. are. Like you're still making the same amount of money. Yeah. So it doesn't matter like the level of production or size of the church so if you want more money you like were. you got to level up like go get a doctorate or something well no it's it's the amount of time you've been doing it oh purely yeah. seniority yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah, i yeah. don't that's interesting i don't like either because it's like there are some pastors that have been preaching at their churches for 20 years and it's like they still suck <laughs> <laughs> i mean let's just be Your honest opinion? yeah let's just, <laughs> it's just like yeah i mean it's that doesn't make sense to me but at the same time <laughs> when you apply hey you know, I'll bring up the big C. It's cap, not that big C. Capitalism. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just it, it's one of these things where we live in this capitalist society. We've all benefited from capitalism. It's yeah. a fantastic thing, but mm-hmm. unchecked, you get these guys that are buying planes for their. I mean, well, granted, dude, let's, let's just be part. honest. I, I, okay, there, there's an argument you can make, right? That. Uh, if you need to go somewhere real fast, right? And it's just like, all right, I can't book a ticket. I just need to get there. This is an emergency. How many of those are there, right? I mean, how many, we talked about there's a lot of celebrities that could afford private jets or to fly private, charter jets, and don't do it. They fly commercial, right? Um, well, I mean, think about how much. Sorry, man. There's a lot of these pastors, like uh, a lot of them. I mean, granted, some of them will get a lot of attention. I get that, whatever. But at the same time, it's... It's just kind of like, <clears throat> especially when you talk about like this whole like we want your money, so we can buy our jet. I mean that that just that looks awful, you know. I mean people don't want to. Well, that's what I was gonna say. It's don't just like see that. The, the worst part is that it's like even if there are good reasons for it, it's like the giant red flag that anyone who wants to criticize can just like boom. That's a little fishy. <clears throat> and then we also now, at, at, you know, the world's changing so much. You know, in the last 20 plus years, you just got the internet, smartphones, and it's like, dude, you can reach more people through Instagram than a, than a, an entire TV studio, right? So these guys who own these like massive TV studios who for the last, you know, three, four, five decades have done an incredible job reaching people, you know, call, say what you want about the way they've raised money and whatever, if they've exploited, what, whatever. But we'll have a podcast like on it's, that. Yeah, it's, it's just... It's interesting because now it's like, dude, you don't need to go anywhere really to do anything. We've proven that, that like ministry, unless you're going overseas for like missions, like, nah. What? I mean, like you can, I mean, come on, like, zoom what? into ba- any building you need to. So, what if your internet's not working? You can't do a Zoom call and you need to just like, you know, private flight that out there, you know? <laughs> and every saying? single Starbucks in your city also lost their internet. It could happen. Yeah. I just mean, a whole blackout. I mean, why would EMP, you, why would shut you, it down. why would you not want a $50 million backup plan? Right. I, it just makes sense to me. Yeah. Hey, walk a mile in their shoes. Super practical. It, it just seems like the, the filter with, when you handle money is, is what's the heart behind it. That seems to be a safe, safe gauge because even, but that's pastors, intention. So that's, it's impossible to know. That's kind of the point. I, how would I know? It's not, it's not, ultimately it's not my decision of how they should be judged. That's, that's true. But I, but I do think it's important the the perception of it and I get to use discernment to decide if that's someone I'd like to be under, you know, sure. teaching wise. Mm-hmm. But I think like it says this first Timothy yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. So the Bible takes money because it's like the number one idol in basically everyone's life at sure. one point or another. We struggle with it because finances are like, I think it's one of the reasons why Jesus talked about it the most, because he knows that we're going to sit here and worry about it and mm-hmm. mishandle it and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so if it gets placed in 
the position where God is supposed to be in our lives, that that's where things get dicey. And and so we talked about that with everything. Right. So that's is everything is yeah. like that. Sure. Yeah. We talked about like if, if your golf game yeah. is more important to you than God. Right. Or your wife. That doesn't please God either. Right. right. Or your wife. No, or, golf or is more anybody. important than your wife. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't. Yeah. Yeah. The or reality you. is there's so many things that compete to take the place of where God should be in our right, lives. Right, right. And uh-huh. that's where. Well, part of the challenge, too, led. for me is like, so, I mean, you can go back. This is easy to find. You know, over the years, it's not uncommon for the U.S. government and the IRS to investigate a lot of these televangelists or really wealthy pastors because of their special tax exempt kind of status because of the 501c3 nature of their ministry. And like, there's a story here. It's a direct quote from a pastor where they were basically under investigation by the the U S government. And, and, uh, they refused to submit financial information about the ministry. And then his quote was, you can go get a subpoena and I won't give it to you. It's not yours. It's God's and you're not going to get it. And that's something I'll go to prison over. So just get over it. It's like, dude, there has to be, isn't like, isn't the Bible also say like you should submit to authority? Yeah, I mean, sure that, does. So he's in direct conflict. Give Caesar with what to Caesar. I mean, yeah, but taxes. it also talks about like yeah. your leaders and how you you should be. But it's submissive. like when, you're right. it's not like it's not like they're like, like killing people, and they're not like they're like telling you to kill some. I mean, granted, that's there's there's provisions for that in the Bible, but it's just like. Why can't you be open about finances? Well, when you hear, yeah, when you hear quotes like that, you're like, dude, you correlation of your heart because if it's not an honest, God honoring thing, and someone calls you out on it, you're not going to be like, yeah, come look. Yeah, it's just another thing. The crazy thing is, dude, there is a there is a there is a higher. You could justify anything by that. Well, there's a bigger advantage to being a a preacher, you know, that's classified as 501c3, than it is to be just a secular dude with your company. So, right, I guarantee there are pastors out there who are just playing the game, probably don't even believe it themselves. And they're just like, well, I get tax exempt and people just give me money. Why mm-hmm. wouldn't I be good at this? Like, why wouldn't I just be an actor? I don't have to pay taxes on my home. Very like, I mean, granted, like, dangerous. Yeah. I'm not like, again, I feel like we're, you know, we're casting judgment on this whole thing, but it's just like, we are trying to, we're trying to bring awareness to a perception that's dangerous to the outside world. Like we're, you know, we, this is something we want to, try to bring awareness to so it can change. Sure. Right. So, and probably also important to note, there are lots and lots of pastors that do it correctly. Yeah. Right. Yeah, well, and you have James, so James one, three, it like, that's the verse that talks about like that teachers. Well, maybe that's the wrong one. Oh yeah. Um, it, where it talks about like, not many should become teachers, my brothers, because you know that we receive stricter judgment. Mm-hmm. It's like, there's this element where it's like, People are watching. People are listening. Half of your ministry is optics. Yeah. Not half. That's probably a gross exaggeration, but a massive component of it because like like what Gab was talking about in terms of like Acts 2, the beginning of the church, like we read that like, okay, so the church is birthed out of the upper room, which was Jesus. Okay, so Jesus dies, raised from the dead, and then eventually he's around for like 40 days, I think, 500 people see him, and then he ascends up into heaven. But his last command to his disciples is, go wait in the upper room for the Holy spirit and then like try to start the church. Right. Mm -hmm. So that could be a whole nother topic for another pod. Just do we, are we really relying on the Holy spirit or the, the the falling of the Holy spirit to really launch our church? Love how you're saying pod. Mm -hmm. It's it's just less syllables. Normal language thing now. Squad pod. So it's like, it's interesting because, okay, this was how Jesus told us to start the church. Mm-hmm. Go wait for the Holy Spirit. Once you have that gift of power, according to scripture, then you go launch your know, ministry. And so fast forward now, they're in the upper room for like 120 days. Eventually it falls down, which is also like, dude, how many, it was 120, right? 120 days. Like how many pastors are like waiting four months? I mean, that doesn't have to be an arbitrary number, but just to start a ministry, it's like, mm-hmm. yo, is this thing really going to pop off? Like they waited 120 days, right? Eventually it happens. They go out in the streets. They start going nuts, speaking in tongues. People think they're wasted, and they're just like, and then Peter comes out, and he's like, no, 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 this isn't. They're not drunk. Like, this is the Holy Spirit. And then Peter preaches Christ mm-hmm. and Christ crucified and raised from the dead. And then it says 3,000 people were added to the church that day. Yep. And then it goes into kind of what Gabby was saying. This is an interesting topic, too, because it says, every believer was faithfully devoted to the teachings of the apostles. 
Their hearts are mutually linked to one another, sharing communion and coming together regular, regularly for prayer. A deep sense of holy awe swept over everyone, and the apostles performed many miracles, signs, and wonders. All the believers were in fellowship as one body, and they shared with one another whatever they had. Out of generosity, they even sold their assets to distribute the proceeds to those who were in need among them. Daily, they met together in the temple courts in one another's homes to celebrate communion. They shared meals together with joyful hearts and tender humility. They were continually filled with praises to God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their numbers daily those who were coming to life or coming you know, to the church. And it's interesting because it's like this is another account where it's like God was bringing the new people into the community. Right. Yeah. But what were they doing? We were gathering every day. We were breaking bread every day. It says they were taking communion every day, which is nothing more than just remembering who Jesus was and what he did. Right. And right. most of our churches, what, do we average communion once a month? Maybe. These people are every single day. It was a constant reminder. And one of the interesting parts when it talks about the beginning is every believer was faithfully devoted to the following devoted to following the teachings of the apostles, essentially Jesus. And it's like, I feel like a lot of churches now it's like, Hey, we got a pastor who follows the teachings or follows the teachings. And then I need you to break it down for me. And then I'll take your secondhand revelation. And like, I'm, I don't need to be faithfully devoted to the text. Like you got it, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, and that's like an this individual sin, problem though, not a church. Problem. Well, right, right, right. But, but as a pastor of a church, it's like, are you not responsible to, to help people get onto that kind of a level where it's sure. like, Hey, like I'm not here to spoon, spoon feed you. Like if anything, the pastor is meant to be like a shepherd where it's like the shepherd would be with his sheep and he has a rod and a staff, right? Mm -hmm. The staff, I forget how my butcher this one. One of them was basically meant to gently guide the sheep. And the other one was meant to beat a wolf mm -hmm. or an animal if it were to come. Right. And so it's like a, the responsibility of a pastor is to kind of protect from, you know, outside predators, whatever you want to call it. Sure. But also it's to gently lead people, you know, where they ought to be going. But mm -hmm. if your pastor is flying around on jets or your pastor yeah. is wearing $5,000 off whites or, you know, your pastor is buying $2 million homes, it's like, bro, it doesn't really feel like we're in this together, man. Sure. Not only that, it's, it's the relationship to a shepherd and the sheep that is real interesting thing is the sheep aren't idolizing the shepherd. Well, right? the shepherd should be Jesus. That's what I would say. Sure. The pastor shouldn't be the shepherd. But in the context though, like fivefold ministry, like there are responsibilities of pastors. Where does the pastor fit into there then? Well, probably uh, not in that illustration then. Yeah. I would say a different illustration. Pastor's the fence. The pastor the should fence. be like, the pastor should be pointing you to the true shepherd. Sure. Right. Well, and, yeah. Jesus is your shepherd. Yeah. But for this, flock of sheep that is a church he's the he's, pastor is responsible to point them to jesus I, i've to heard guide that them i have right heard way. that yeah um it yeah it gets it, dicey it's tough i yeah. mean because it's like well regardless it, so why do we even have them regardless of if that we, if we all have our good shepherd regardless of that illustration well, i mean because i think people need guidance and stuff i mean i think it's a good thing ultimately um, it is yeah the, the, i agree the necessary. issue for sure the, uh i think regardless of whether we like it or not, pastors are idolized, right? This is what we do, right? Sure. It's, it's the wrong thing to do, but we idolize people. Um, and it's really a relationship with God or Jesus or whatever that should matter. Right. Uh, but, you know, we tend to put pastors on a pedestal like, you know, this is this is the guy I put my faith in. Right. That's totally wrong. But right. so many people do that. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to uh, people that are just like, yeah, I mean, my pastor should be the one setting the ultimate example to me. You know, this like – as if he's not human, um, and it, it's unfortunate, but it is. It, it goes into that, you know, they are held to a higher standard for that. Yeah. So, you know, because of that, then it's just like, well, you know, my idol, like, has all these things and stuff like that, and he's just following the ways of God. So if I follow the ways of God, you know, I'll be able to, you know, wear, you know, $2,500 shoes. I mean, it, um. Yeah, just again, we're all just coming back to the same theme, it's just sending the wrong message. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's funny because I just wanted to say, uh, shout out to Preachers and Sneakers because you know, <laughs> he, he's probably one of the main, uh, you know, uh, inspirations for, for this subject just because what is that? Uh, you haven't seen it, mm -mm. so it's an Instagram account. Um, I don't know how old it is, but it, it basically just shows like uh, it shows like a snapshot of like a pastor like doing an interview or on stage or a picture they have on Facebook, 
And then it just like show like and it has a piece of clothing that they're wearing on the right hand side pointed out mm-hmm. like on like a shopping website and how, how much, much that is. is. Oh boy, yeah, it's not pretty. Some of these, yeah, it is not. Um, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, so uh, here we Good go. Them, Here's one. Uh, it's like Chad Veach doing an interview with Israel Houghton. Uh, Houghton, I, I, I can never say his name right. Houghton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jordan Houghton. One Retro Highs, twenty five hundred dollars shoes. It's like. Okay, sick. There was one, and I hate, like, uh, I, I absolutely hate this because I do love Judah Smith, um, and I hate to rag on him, but he was wearing a Gucci shawl collar jacket, $3,600, in one of his videos. <laughs> oh, John Gray, who is a common appearance on this website, he's wearing uh, a Louis Vuitton parka, it's a $9,600 parka. Jeez. And I mean, you know, he, he was also slammed for buying that $200,000 Lamborghini for his wife, and that... Mm-hmm. You know, again, I, I just like you have to know. You just have to know the optics, and you could be prepared to defend it and give any kind of human reasoning for why you thought this was fine, right? Um, You're but, just giving ammunition to the other side. I know. I mean, it's just like how many people. Like, do you think that gift to your wife is worth the people you're going to turn away? That's a good mm-hmm. question. I mean. If, if, if you feel like personally a justify, that's fine, then fine. But, I mean, people are going to judge you. And there are people, like, your following is so big to think that there aren't some people that are just going to write yeah. write off Christianity because you're a, a crappy example. Dude, I, mean, I got, it's crazy. It's, it's wild. I got family members that will be on vacation together, and it's not like a lavish vacation. We'll just be in, like... Like a, like a normal place. Like it's nothing crazy. Like we're not going to like the Maldives or like Bali. Like it's just like a normal little vacation, nothing crazy. And I'll have like family members who are in, in ministry and they'll just ask me either not to include them in pictures or to not tag them in anything. And it's just because it's that whole thing. It's just like, look, we're not ashamed of this, but like there's no benefit to draw more attention to this, right? Like we don't want to turn off people because like they're going through hard times and it's like, you might have people in your church that are just like, bro, I don't get a vacation. Like yeah. I'm scrapping, I'm scrapping to just make ends meet and you're giving to the, and they're trying to give to the church to be obedient. And it's like, it's just common sense. Like that's the hard part. Like you yeah. just wish these, it's like, it doesn't take a lot of self-awareness and humility to realize like, this ain't going to look good. No, I mean, and that's noble. I like, I like, I mean, I like that even though, you know, it's just like, and people would say, oh, you shouldn't be ashamed of how you live your life and whatever. It's just like, well, I mean, yeah, the optics are yeah. so important. And you chose to take on the responsibility that's of a leading huge people weight. Yeah. into what God has for them. That's, no, and that's, that's the thing. Weight. And if yeah. you want to buy, if you want to wear, a, if you want to wear a ten thousand dollar parka, then just you picked the wrong thing to do. Sure. Right. I mean, it's just like uh, you have to know that, right? And it's just. I don't know. I mean, it, materialism is kind of a disease in our culture mm-hmm. generally. Um, but it's just, I mean, it's just like one of these things where you see people give into materialism, right? The other part of this is, is the addiction part of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so some people you would say, I mean, it's just like, you know, not that alcohol is bad. We're going to cover that in another podcast. Um, you know, because I think, you know, around this table, we all drink, like, you know, we all have drinks and stuff like that, but it, it gets to the point where it's a problem. Right. Right. And so you could argue that the extreme of materialism is buying, you know, a $5,000 jacket, right? That's, that is out of reach of 99.99% of all Americans, mm-hmm. Americans, right. And I'm mm-hmm. not even talking about people throughout the world. Yeah. And so, when, when you talk that that could be seen as the extreme of materialistic addiction, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, you see, so I mean, it's the same thing as just like, hey, sitting there like bragging about how much you drink all the time, and you're a pastor, right? Um, it's just like That's or a good point. or being drunk, like right? It's just like you're still or your addiction. It's like you talk about drinking every single day. It's like, oh, I like to start my morning out with. Uh, you know, Bloody Mary, mimosa, and then at lunch, I like to have a nice little IPA, and then for dinner. <laughs> no, I mean, right? And it's just like, yeah, it's just like a pastor saying that, right? And you're just like, all right, have well. You, has that happened to you? Huh? Do you what? hear that? Have y'all experienced pastors doing that? No, no. no he's I'm, saying it's I'm the equivalent it, I'm, of. It's the equivalent. Oh, if you were okay. to hear that, flashing it's, like, it's kind of like the equivalent okay, of just like wearing saying. all this money, right? Sure. So 
it's just like it's the extreme, uh, you know, kind of like the materialistic addiction, right? It's right. just at to be the equivalent of pastor saying something as absurd I see. I see. as saying like, "Well, this is what I drink every day," you know. And it's right. just like again, if you're controlling it, it's not an issue. The substances, but it's just like the the optics are bad. Well, it's funny because this is it, there's a verse, First Timothy six, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. So you're, what you're saying is right. Like if you're long, if you're trying, if you're longing to be rich, the temptation will bring you into me, like different, many different yeah. like foolish and harmful desires that can lead to addiction or to lead yeah. to like, that's from, that is from longing to be rich, which well, is that, crazy. You to said think that was, about. you said that was first Timothy six. Yeah, so I actually nine. had another one that's the two verses before that and says, for we brought nothing into the world and we can, we mm -hmm. can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. Right. And I think, cause the hard part with a lot of these, with a lot of these ministers is like, I, I truly believe they didn't get into it for the money, but the challenge is once you kind of rise to a little bit a good point. of, of, of fame and influence and it just comes with it. Like the challenge is like one of my, one of my favorite quotes, it says something along the lines of like part of the problem with our world is like things were meant created to be used and people were created to be loved. And now we live in a world where like things are loved and people are used. Mm. So it's like we flash all of the nice things that we have and we don't feel bad asking people for more money. Right. And it's just like a sim and unfortunately a symptom kind of our culture but, you know, again, like with all of these topics, you know, I think it's all over Proverbs. Like one thing I'm trying to be better at is like really try, seek to understand them or where they're at before. Like, I feel like I need to be understood. <clears throat> and it's just like, we all have our opinions and it's, and it's, and to me, it's honestly, it's sad. It's sad that it gets to this point where it's like, man, like I could pull up 30 Bible verses that is just like materialism is like, no, no, it's not good. Yeah. Even for the basic Christian. And it's then, yeah. and then well, that's the, when we that's see our point. leaders, yeah, that's a good point. It's the, the leaders are obviously under a bigger spotlight under more judgment. Right. It says that, but it's also everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Like these verses aren't just for pastors. Like how am I handling materialism? Mm -hmm. Right. It's a, it's a, it's like a heart check. Look in the mirror because I, you know, is money an idol for me? Right. Like it, it makes you self reflect as well. Like it's not, it, it's important that pastors follow the example hundred percent, but it's also not just for pastors. It's for everybody too. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is. Yeah. It, I hard. mean, I think it, it's just, it's just a combined, um, it's just kind of a combined taboo because you have like, you know, so the, the church campus I go to probably 2000, ish people every Sunday never seen a Lambo in the parking lot I mean they have Maseratis and stuff which are arguably cheaper you can get used one of those but I mean but I'll just say like those are just church members most people yeah most people like and these people own their own businesses and stuff like like most people aren't this crazy like I mean I don't like people walk around wearing like Louis Vuitton like I don't see that in church it's just like so not only are they under a spotlight it's like it's clear that they've leveraged their platform to have all these nice things. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the biggest thing. It's not like, it's not like these pastors that are doing this to have just some like, you know, business business where they make like handcrafted wedding rings and they make millions off of it or some, mm -hmm. something like that. Well, there's celebrity, uh, you know, the whole concept of a celebrity pastor, like just became a thing, like in the last probably 15, 20 years with social media, right? Isn't that such a paradox? Celebrity pastor. And I don't think it means the pastors are celebrity. I, th I think that more in the sense of like, like I remember seeing like Judah Smith on the TV one I'm, point. I'm just saying I that love term. Judah. That term is so absurd. Right, right, right. Yeah. But like I love Judah, but like the 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 lower third literally just said Justin Bieber's pastor, and they were like <laughs> oh, interviewing boy. him about like I think it was all the shenanigans when Bieber got busted in Miami for like speeding and all that stuff. Well, that's stuff. clearly a title they gave him. But well, right. It's just, yeah, yeah. I don't. Not nothing on. I I think Judah's incredible. I like Judah a yeah, lot. Yeah, he's the man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's just like you know I think about someone like a Carl Lentz. I remember being at you know Hillsong Conference in New York years back and uh i loved carl like, he just seemed like a genuine dude but like i remember 
he was pretty tied in with a lot of the fashion world in New York, in New York City. And there was this Jerry Lorenzo who, who uh, I think he started like, it's a clothing company called Fear of God. And it's pretty like high end, like high fashion stuff, right? And because Carl had a great relationship with him, you know, Jerry would just give him all of these super rare one of one kind of clothing articles because he doesn't, I mean, everything he makes is one of one. He doesn't like, he doesn't have like a line of this and like he has inventory. It's like everything is one of one, right? And so, I think that like kind of going back to like my initial story about how we ended up with our house, that's the hard part. Cause it's like, man, you know, I think there is definitely an element of, you know, people want to gift cause I grew up with it, bro. Everyone wants to give the pastor a gift. That's, that's, that's in, uh, Philippians, Paul, the Paul was going around mm-hmm. talking to all the churches in the, and there was a part of it that he was like, you guys want to bless me. Yeah. You should pull it up. I got it right here. So this was, I, we didn't get into the other day because we got so worked up over the Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ. Yeah. But that wasn't the point. I was trying to get to the next part. Yeah. Did we but talk about that on the pod? No. No, no, no. 4.13? No, that was just random over there. That's a big one. Yeah. So, so, but after that, you go into verse 15 and he's talking about, because, because Paul, when he was traveling, because like all these epistles, right? This is Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. Uh, Ephesians is his letter to the church in Ephesus, right? right? So he's just, he's just writing letters to these churches. Right. And so he's saying, as you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I first brought you the good news and then the only ones yeah. and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church did this. Even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent help more than once. I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a award for your kindness. And so it, in that sense, it was like, Paul wasn't like turning down gifts yeah. or anything like that, but he was just making a point that he's just like, I'm not asking for anything from anyone, but like, I want you to know how thankful I am for what you gave to right, me and right. what you had allowed me to do. That's cool. And I want you to know to, to be able to you know, like ultimately receive your reward for your kindness. But yeah. Yeah. What an example. But how do we like, we should, just get, bananas. Paul, we should get Paul on the pod. Cause it's like, it, like we talked about this earlier where it's like, you, you, I kind of feel like a, a jerk for like coming at these guys, you know, sometimes I don't at all, but like, <laughs> but then it's like, bro, is someone going to call him out? Like, it's just at some point, like yeah. it's like, there this is, is a line. so antithetical yeah. to there's a line, just but it's the, just hard to decide. <laughs> like, cause it's like everyone's line is different in their own mind. Right. But I mean, when you, the, the, uh, that's what I love about this guy's Instagram is he's put a quantity to like he's quantified how how materialistic these guys are being but what's the line of of the what's the number that would be fine it doesn't it doesn't matter it's so absurd no i agree that it's, it's clearly abs- past the yes, line yes 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 yeah, but yeah. the problem is we're trying to i'm going to say 200 bucks for sneakers well I compare mean, the bronze you see what i mean it's not <laughs> it's not just that it's, I was it's getting it, that. what what's the average american able to afford right yeah the average american I've never spent or maybe more than average a, church member. I've never spent more than hundred thirty thousand dollars. Or sorry, hundred thirty thousand oh, dollars. Sheesh! <laughs> hey, hey, that's what I do. High roller. One hundred thirty dollars on shoes. Yeah. Right. Um, and I could afford better shoes or more expensive shoes. I don't do it. Like, I don't want to be. Well, you yeah, don't need it. I know. I know. I don't need it. No, at all. Part agree. of the challenge I is agree. social media. These guys are on stage every week broadcasting for the world. So it's like, bro, I need my fire fit, dog. Like, I still vividly remember, like, you can go back like 10 years and watch like Elevation. Yeah. Bro, Stephen Furtick's out there, like, in his like little like button up with a tie tucked into his right, pants with right. a bell. I mean, just young gun, like, just getting after it. And then like five <laughs> years later, you just watch this transition. You're like, oh, so swoop neck and like a, like a crystal looking like necklace with holes in the jeans. And like Charleston boots, like this man, and no judgment. Honestly, I low key, I rocked that that look no, for no. a while. I mean, that's a, it's a cool. Look, like you know? s- style's one thing, right? <laughs> but it was but just, you can go was, to freaking yeah. Ross and Forever Twenty One, right, 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 and get yeah. like a sick outfit for under one hundred fifty dollars. Nah, yeah, yeah. Right. But you so can just like, see where it's like, as the world's changing and as you're like be, being seen more, it's like there's just naturally more thought going into your appearance. Yeah, and I, I to- I totally, I just but I love say, I agree that. That stuff, is, I believe, is excessive, right? I just think it's a tough... Like, I, I also believe pastors, like, should be paid for what they do. Now, sure. what they... What I they... That's what I believe. I might push back a little bit. I, I, I we can it. get after it. But I think it's just always going to be difficult to, to land on. Like, people always want, this is fine, this isn't. And a lot of the Bible, while talking about money, is like, 
here's the dangers of it. There's not like clear cut. This is the number that's acceptable. This is what should be allowed. This is what. And so people take it and go all different ways of the spec. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to violation of the con. Like, do you, do you feel bad when you're buying these big things? Like, do you feel like it should be going somewhere else? Do you even have systems of trusted people around you that could, that can help you make decisions? Like, are you really like in tune with the spirit when you make decisions? I feel like it says a lot about your relationship with, with other human beings. If you're okay with having a lot and knowing like, and and knowing other people that don't. Right. Yeah. That's good. And you're responsible as a pastor to take all of that into consideration. Yeah. So well, I, and they sign up. I mean, they, they do it willingly. It's not right, like. Right. You're not forced to be a pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in yeah. fact, it's, it's, you need to really think about this before you think commit to it. Twice. Yeah. yeah. So a lot more. I mean, that's part of the reason for me where, um, one of the reasons where I kind of stepped away, you know, years ago from the organized church for a little while and just kind of wanted to do my own soul searching. It was, I mean, I would just read Bible verses and I just be like, this is literally polar opposite of what we're doing. Like this makes no sense. And, and I'm just like, are we, are we just not reading the book? Are we just like, are we ignorant or are we just like choosing to just not do what it says? Cause it's like, like, I know it's super, super like hot take unpopular opinion that I'm like, I don't know if pastors should be paid because I'm like, I don't see one verse in the Bible. That's that says it's all right. We can look at it. And it's like, I guess <laughs> it, it, I haven't okay. dove into even, it enough, but, even and I've got that, a problem with it now. You could it's argue like, our culture. culture. You could argue our that. culture dictates that. I understand. But that. I mean, should we have, but we have a church, lot of, should examples. we have churches with like hundreds of people on staff? We have a, but we have a lot of examples. Or, of I guess it's necessary. Not being should churches paid. be this big? That's another thing. This is like, should, should they be as big as they are? Cause I mean, yeah. So we had examples of Paul getting gifts from, from the Philippians, but not asking for anything. Like we have examples of that, but we have no examples of vocational ministry, like to get paid to do it. Well, and the other thing too, like, so, so it's like, well, kind of like what I just said, about it's big, wrong, but yeah. Well, what I was saying about, without, you know, the big churches and stuff, but, you know, you've heard people say like, avoid the temptation before the temptation, you sure. know? Right. So like, it's, it's just like, well, it's, it's kind of like one of those things when we're talk we're going to talk about, you know, should churches be as large or do we do church the right way today? Sure. Uh, the fact that we've allowed churches to get this big, it almost kind of pushes sometimes you would think pastors into that temptation of, oh, my church is huge. I could leverage this. I could make more money. I could buy into, you know, and all of a sudden they're just like going wild with this, you know, these thoughts about materialism and stuff. Now, some people, some pastors have done this brilliantly where they just don't, they stay under the radar. They're not like all about that. And like, I mean, those are, those are pastors that aren't as, you know, I would say uh, as far as their image, they're not as controversial. Like Andy, Andy Stanley or something, you know, sure. you talk about people that are just like solid. They just get it. Yeah. yeah. And they're just like, they're not worried about what they're wearing and all this stuff. Like, but they've, uh, they've amassed this massive following. Right. Sure. Um, but I feel like, you know, the fact that we've allowed these churches to get so large, it's almost like, is this inevitable for some pastors just because is, are they just like, doomed to fall well, into this because we've allowed like this new form of how we do church to take hold. Yeah. And then without getting into to too much judgment, like, you know, it's, it's sometimes <laughs> it's, it's too Im- late for that. It's impossible to, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's impossible to really know, but it's like, you look at some of these situations That's and, important. and you have, so. yeah, you have like all these examples in scripture where it's like these people committed to this way of life. And then God was adding to their numbers daily or like Jesus tells Peter, like I will build my church. Right. And it's, you look at these big organizations and you're just like, I don't know. But like the question in my mind is like, did God build that? Or did like, like well-intentioned people ultimately build it? Cause that's the problem is like, if you've got charisma and passion and you've got a good model and you you've could got preach anything, backing, you could preach anything. Dude, you, and it would sell. You're, you're building an organization. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And so it's not hard. Like you see it in the, in the, in the, like in the secular world, I guess you would call it where it's like, some people are really good at building big organizations. Some people aren't. And you're just like, it's hard to look at it and be like, so how much did just well-intentioned, but very capable people build of this, you know, I, that's their why way, I, 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 but you never know. Point. But it just, to, to me, I just, the question pops up in my mind. I, I would say that's why, like, I wish people 
w- like would just use discernment. So like for me, if I were going, if I had no church home and I was like going to go find a church to plug my family into, I would go to a service. I would, I would ask questions. I would make sure that this isn't just an organization ran by human ability. Like this is an organization with committed humans to be led by the spirit of God. Like I, that's on me to figure out, right? That's on me to, and, and so people, I, I guess the problem is people just blindly follow and that's not, that's not healthy for anybody. And if you're blindly following a leader who is blindly leading, that's super dangerous. Well, and yeah. part of the part, what hard, what's hard about that is you're only going there for an hour on a Sunday and you're trying to figure all that out. And that's really hard because someone can wear a mask. Like think about the, the Acts church. Yeah. They met every day in the temple. They broke bread every day, took communion every day. Like when you're living with someone, it's easy to see like, bro, the there's something sketchy here. But that, that's, that's my just, point. You don't get Sorry. that access to these people. No, 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 no. Being plugged into a church doesn't mean one hour on a Sunday. Being well, right, plugged but, into a church is, I'm saying, you need to create a, where you're not there one hour on a Sunday. You need to figure out and be right. in it similarly well, to that. But let's take a mega church, right? So it's like. If they don't have systems set up for you to do that, then that's a red flag. Well, right. But the systems then look like, because I mean, I used to be a part of this. We did all the curriculum. It's like. Okay, so we have small groups that we that meet once a week for a couple hours. We have a serve. We maybe have a couple services, like on a maybe a Sunday. We have a Wednesday. You know, we have a small group. We have some other stuff going on, but it's like it's still nothing close to like living day in day out with these people, breaking bread every day, and yeah. like doing communion every day. It's like yeah. they were. It's it's like I mean, I think about like us in this office. Like we spend eight plus hours a day with each other. Like, it's pretty easy to see, like, intentions. Like, I know, like, I don't have to, like, dig into your life to know that you're just a great dude, and I can trust you. But that, and that's not because, like, I did digging. It's just because we've had enough time to spend together. Right. You know, I've, I've, I feel like, you know, I've got a good sense of, like, just you're a generous dude. You're a kind dude. You're, like, someone I would want in my life because I feel like you're a trusted friend. Mm. But it's, like, it's hard to f- really figure the, those things out. And probably we talked about it the other day, probably a lot, cause it's just transient. You know, we mm-hmm, do, yeah. we do things so transiently now that Here, we're, we're moving, think about. we're connecting online. What, what is the church? The people, right? The people who like your brothers and sisters in Christ, right? So do you do life with people like that every day? So when I was in church all the time, like part of what was hard, like for me, when I moved down here is I was involved in churches and I started at one church um, and then went to another church because it was just, I didn't, ha- because I didn't have that connection. There was, and it, it, and sure, I could have done a better job of like seeking it out, sure. but end of the day, there was no one, I would leave that church. And part of the problem that's, uh, we'll get into this on another pod. It was, they started paying me to play in the band. And then I inevitably just, it was just a job. Mm-hmm. Right. But then the other challenge is, I had to get real with myself. I would go home and I was like, I don't want to hang out with these people. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm Mm -hmm. glad like we're acquaintances. We're, we're friendly, but it's like when Monday comes and Tuesday comes, like I'm not hitting these people up to go work out or to hang out. And then when they, when they would hit me up to like get lunch, I'm just like, Oh my gosh, like, how do I get out of this? What excuse can I make? Yeah. And I just, and then I went to another church. Same thing. It's like, great. I just, I never really found. And then I went to another ministry. Same thing. It was just, I never, got to Monday and was like, I want to chill with these people. We'll get, we'll get there. Uh, that's a, that's a whole different podcast uh, that we're going to record. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Uh, Sorry. Okay. I was ready. To fine. Go. No, you guys are great. <laughs> Two Fired <hour> pod. up. <laughs> Fired up. Um, oh, wait, let me just say this. Joe then Rogan. we can change. Then we can change. I would say, no, I'll wait. Are we doing it soon? <laughs> I say, we're probably, are we doing it soon? Probably just throw it out there. Now. Tease the people. Okay. All right. This is what I would say. What the whistle. So this is my last statement. We can move on. The church and, Jesus are what's their relationship groom and bride, right? So the church is the bride to Jesus, Mm -hmm. right? With that being said, if the church, cause the church, like the church can fail. Right. And so I guess my, my organization or like with like the great commission, the the church overall will not fail the gate, right? They'll take on the gates of hell. I'm saying people within the church will fail at times. Right. Because they're imperfect people. My worry is that failed fallen people within the church take the place of God's reputation in our lives. 
for sure. Right. And I think yeah, that's not good. If people get church hurt and it's justified and true and needs to be addressed and corrected and all the things, it just is so sad to me when that replaces their thought and image of who yeah. God is and what his heart is, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was getting at when I said that people idolize pastors. People idolize yeah. people. People right. idolize, you know, you know, we're all people. We're all going to fail yeah. at some point. Yeah, ultimately. and so if you experience church hurt, God's right. hurt as well. Right. right? That's and we'll, just a sad... We'll do a whole, like, restoration pod, because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on your side. I'd probably take a really extreme angle yeah, I mean, on that got that a most lot of people wouldn't hurt. agree with. You've got a lot of church hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, it's, and it's real. And For sure, for sure. I think the biggest problem is... Like I've got no beef with, I think the way we restore people does need, does need some, some changing, but yeah, ultimately sure. it's like part of the problem is that there's, there's not repentance or there's not like a, a humility when like some of these things like do happen. Like I'll be the first to forgive somebody, but if like, if you're just going to keep doing what you're doing and not having the awareness or like I'm like if something bad happens or something comes out like dude that that's tough it sucks like I I I know a lot about that like it's not fun but the hardest part for me is like it's like even if it were to get to that point you know it's like how do you respond when you're being called out or when right. these things are being said like right. are you it's so important just going to keep acting like it's not happening or are you going to have pride and just not submit to whether it's a leadership or a, whatever right. like it's it's just challenging because I agree with you. We shouldn't project failed people's behavior onto God. Right. But it's like when there are leaders and there's not a genuine sense of like humility and awareness. It hurts. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's All right. tough. That's we got to wrap this up. Wrap it up. We're, right. we're over. Um, we're totally. getting over. We're, episodes are getting longer and longer. I know. Like to point stop out. this. Just lots All right. to say. Yeah. Tomorrow will be 59 minutes. Just like, just go straight Will Smith on me. Just, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daddy. Justin, it's <laughs> because pod. Justin's first to end talk was right. 20 minutes. So yeah, it's it's always my fault. <laughs> it's fine. It is. It I really is. A better job. I'm you super off. butt hurt. If you haven't figured it out by now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This is my therapy, people. No, so thank you for this being so really kind. Just for Justin. We're, we're all <laughs> witnessing Justin's therapy. One elaborate effort to yeah, yeah. un f me. Yeah. So um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, probably giving you guys a lot to think about again we're just trying to bring awareness to some of these issues and um you know hopefully we can get better and again the, the, the intention is not to judge here um it's really just to understand you know um when you're when you're called to ministry you decide to go into ministry it's just like you there's a lot of people giving wrong impressions about what ministry is and yeah. what ministry is supposed to be like and and we just want to avoid that and you know we really want the right heart in the right place um what is, yeah, and like, things what like does that. God say so, about it? Shout out to the televangelist that opted for the Cessna over the G5. <laughs> really? Yeah, whichever one, you know, that I don't remember in that list. The Cessna is that little plane. Someone G had a Gulfstream 5 and someone had a 4. No, 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 but someone had a Cessna. There were a couple Cessnas on the list. Which is like a little prop plane. Yeah. This is like not even close to those yeah. other ones. It's just like... Shout out to them. If I could say one thing for 10 seconds. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. This is the one thing I wanted to say, but we've talked about it. It's like Jesus at the height of his ministry did the lowest act of serving by washing the feet. So it's like, yep. that's our example. It's like, you can get big and big and big in ministry, but Jesus example is the bigger he got the yeah. night right before the end, he went to the lowest level of serving. And I love that. So pastor start stacking your chairs again. I love that. Wow. That's powerful. That really is. That it. I, I do have a lot to say about that, but we will end it because we're <laughs> already we? over because of Justin. <laughs> Run it back. I'll, I'm sitting out Run the next back. one. You guys, yeah, you <laughs> guys. All right, folks. Thank you. See you next episode.